Hello all, Chief Prepper here. Uh, a lot of prepping channels are talking about what you need to focus on. And uh, I would say it hasn't changed. If you're new to prepping, it's food. You know, the ability both to cook it, prepare it, uh, without electricity, like camping type food. Uh, or the ability to cook food while you're camping. So, you know, you need some kind of propane stove uh, or a rocket stove if you can burn wood, some kind of grate over a fireplace, uh, you know, cast iron cookware. You know, none of that's cheap, none of it's quick, none of it's easy. Uh, as in, I've been doing this for hard since 2015 and really hard since 2020 uh, and the only thing I wanted last Christmas were cast iron pots and I got a bunch so I had my best friend buy me a set and then my wife bought me two really nice pots and we may we may go invest in a couple other things but uh, you know got a wood burning stove recently haven't even tested it but the plan is for that to be on the back porch. Uh, we have charcoal grills. I have camping wood grates so I can cook over fire. I have a rocket stove. Uh, none of that's like overnight stuff. Uh, the other thing is, I would tell you, if you're in the city and you have nowhere to go, having all that shit may not do you any good. Uh, if you have it and you don't know how to use it, don't waste your money. Unfortunately, that means you're going to be a very hungry, unhappy person. I'm not trying to be doom and gloomy, but having gear you don't know how to use is like not having gear. So, uh, you know, everybody talks about food, but you know, water, you die without water in three days. And you lose your mind after about 36 hours. And then after that, it just gets worse and worse. Um, so you need the ability to filter water. If you're like me, where I'm relatively remote, I have water like within mm, probably 200 yards of my house, and I can get to it as long as uh, CPS is not uh, guarding it with uh, UAVs or you know people driving around. Even if they're driving around, I can manage to get over there. But if you got to walk more than that you're going to need buckets uh, preferably with lids and you're going to need some kind of cart so if your plan is to haul water every day and you got to walk four or five miles that's going to be some very uncomfortable walking uh, the first time you do it you might not make it back with the water so you're going to need water filtration systems uh, more than one because you know and then you're going to need to know how to build a regular, like a sediment filter, the stuff to get the big particles out. And I would say the easiest way to do that is to use a planter with dirt in it. So you pour the dirty, nasty, mucky water through that. And then what comes out at the bottom will be a lot clearer. And then you can use a, one of the other type filters to filter it to make it where you can drink it. And then possibly even boil it after that. So... You have to have the ability to heat stuff. So, you know, if your house is electric or it's gas and there's no electricity and there's no gas, that's the importance of a rocket stove. That's the importance of a fireplace or uh, wood burning something. And then security, camping gear, you know, firearms, the bullets to go with it, uh, you know. Also knowing how to use all that stuff, you know, if you can hunt, hunt, if you can fish, fish, you know, but you also got to be a place where you can do both of those things. You can't just do it, you know, can't be hunting in the city. So, um, I would say, you know, if you got food, water, security, taking care of camping gear, which includes some kind of shelter. You know, rudimentary is a tarp and some GP50 cords strung between trees to keep the rain off of you uh, down to the ground to uh, so that you can, you know, get out of the wind if it's cold and wintry. I mean, the bottom line is if we have World War III, 
even without nukes or EMPs, even if we go just kinetic, where it's just force on force, where we're shooting at each other, uh, you know, if they cut the electricity off and they cut uh, communications, you know, you you can imagine going through winter or summer without the shelter of a house, without the ability to stay warm, the ability to stay cool. Uh, you know, you, you're gonna need hand lotion of some kind to keep your hand from splitting. My hands split horribly in the winter time, to some extent in the summer time right now. Um, I'm not gonna tell you that it's too late, but if the shit kicks off tomorrow, it's too late. Uh, you know, you need canned goods. You need. I mean, there, there's so much you need. If you want to know where to focus, water, water purification, filter systems, storing, carrying capability, transportable mobility, assuming you can't drive a car, food, ability to cook it, way to stay warm in the wintertime, staying cool in the summertime, is, we're all going to lose that. Uh, security, lights, communication, some kind of walkie-talkie, if you can afford it, a UAV, if you can make sure you shield the battery from so it still works and the, the little machine, the UAV actually works, you know, having that to put up so you can see stuff, you know, but there is a drawback to that. When it goes up, if someone can see it and they're close enough, you know, they know someone's got a UAV. <laughs> So one of the things that I, sorry about that, I failed it miserably is uh, I got the cast iron pots, but I actually haven't used them. They're not seasoned. They're not ready to cook on. So I do, I do need to do that sometime soon. Uh, and I've got the kind I can make soup and stew in, skillets and all kinds of stuff. So, you know. I'm way more ready than most people, but I'm not as ready as I want to be. And I'm working pretty much every day, every week, uh, here and there, because I have other commitments. Um, I would say probably Jace Medical would also be a good investment, only because, you know, infections will kill people quickly. Uh, during a shift event, I mean, the infections were so bad in Iraq, depending on what kind of scratch or cut you got, if you didn't take care of it, it could give you the kind of infection that could kill you. Uh, just because the water we were showering in came out of the Euphrates River, it wasn't filtered, it wasn't purified, it wasn't safe to drink, but we could use it to wash our bodies with. So if you had a wound or a cut and that water got into it, then there was a severe risk. Um, Probably a way to go to the bathroom. You know, I was on Prepper Nation and talked about the fact that most people, uh, you know, especially if they're city folks and they don't camping, they don't, or they when they do go camping, they're glamping where they have a toilet to sit on. You know, your ability to squat in the woods or hang something, hang a butt cheek off of a stump or a tree or and go, you know, some people can't do that or they won't be able to do it until they have to. Uh, toilet paper have some of that I mean I have I have get home bags and I have bug out bags and both of those have toilet paper in them less in the get home bag more in the bug out bag uh, probably wet ones or baby wipes to help with cleanliness you got to take care of your feet if you're walking a lot or if, you know like if the shit hits the fan well, my wife is at work. She's got 29 miles driving distance from where she works to the house. And my advice to her will be to walk all night. To walk until she gets home. And that's that's a long, lots of long time. So, and she'll be sore and stiff. So, um, gas cans on hand, uh, backup power, solar generators, solar panels. For the solar generators, uh, actually test them and use them before you need them. Um, what else? Gas for your vehicles. If you're not inside the EMP footprint, then your vehicle should still run. Uh, 
if you're like me and I spent time and money on a much older vehicle in theory even if I'm in an EMP footprint it should still run because it has points and condensers it doesn't have solid state transistor based ignition system um, if I'm outside the EMP footprint according to a guess gray man had then the vehicle should still run maybe maybe not he wouldn't say one way or the other he just said that older vehicles like 1972 dodge that points and condensers and it's got like 12 circuits you know will run uh, more than likely with the newer vehicles maybe not uh if you're in the city you need to get out but if you don't have anywhere to go that's not a good way to approach it you know you're not too late at this point but you need to work on everything and unfortunately all that shit costs money so unless you got a pile of cash laying around uh, you ain't gonna be able to do it and then you know your ability to even if you have money you know depending on the fastest thing with China kicks off if it kicks off I'm not saying it's going to but I would tell you that the, the risk factor has gone up so now what's going to happen we don't know uh, we won't know until actually it actually happens so I sent my wife a text because I put together a go bag for her and a go bag for me to get home bags and they stay in our vehicles and uh, I told her I should give her specific instructions in the text she may or may not read it she's she's not a believer but I told her I hope in the text I hope we never need to use never need to use this information so I'm recording this on my phone for the first time, so I don't know how this is going to work for an upload. But uh, So food, the way to cook it, the way to prepare it, uh, which means pots, pans, some kind of heating source. And you need a long-term heating source. So you need, I would recommend some kind of rocket stove. Uh, any welding shop can build you those. You know, uh, REI, Bass Pro, any of the outdoor stores, you can get water filters typically. They're not cheap. You know, it's $189 to $150, $200. I have two gravity feed ones that you pour in the nasty water on one end and it goes down a hose and goes into another uh, reservoir, gets filtered, comes out where you're supposed to be able to drink it. So, um, security, obviously weapons, you know, camp axe, axe handle, baseball bat, uh, I have collapsible police batons for one for me and one for my wife. I, you know, guns, bullets. You know, they know how to use the guns and bullets. Know how to use the uh, the police baton if you have one. You can pick those up at gun shows or other places. Um, hunting gear, fishing gear. You know, there's a long list of things that you probably should consider, but you gotta. You gotta go through, you gotta find out where you're at in the prepping uh, world and then work that. So it's food, water, security, shelter. You know, if you're walking, you need some kind of tent, tarp, uh, sleeping bag, you know, something that will keep you warm in some freezing temperatures. Uh, even in Texas, you know, we had a freeze for like 14 or like seven days and stayed below freezing. Uh, so if, we, if you don't have a house, you know, way to heat your house or way to heat something wherever you're sleeping at a way to cool something if you can wherever you're at during the summer uh, you know everything you do needs to be based on where you're at so if you're in the Pacific Northwest where it's three months of heat relatively like six weeks of really hot and then you know six weeks of kind of hot you know three weeks on the front three weeks on the back and then in the middle it's really hot then you only have three months of worrying about being hot, and which you got nine months of cold and wet. So your gear needs to be based on your environment. Uh, and realize your environment is probably not going to be in a building anymore. It's probably going to be outside. So a little thing of sunscreen wouldn't hurt. Uh, bug spray, a can of off, like a small, small can that you can put in a bag to help keep the bugs away. Uh, especially down in Texas, we got mosquitoes that carry uh, disease that'll make you really sick. Uh, 
some kind of hat, especially if you're on foot. Keep, it, keep the critters out of your hair, off your head. Uh, learn how to tuck your pants inside your boots. And you know, basically if you stop at night, if you're on the go, don't take your boots off. Just don't. You know, your feet are going to swell and they're going to hurt. And then if you have to get up and run in the middle of the night, you're going to have, you won't be able to get your boots back on. So, uh, you only take your boots off when you're stopped and you know you're not going anywhere for a while. Uh, or if you do take them off, it's for a very short of rare time to change your socks. Uh, so gear wise, you need outdoor gear. So you need boots, you need outdoor pants, outdoor uh, long sleeve shirts, you know, keep the brush off of you, keep the sun off of you. I would recommend a cowboy hat of some kind. The more expensive you can afford, up to a 30X El Patron is what I would recommend, but those are $600 hats. But the material is superior to the other ones. But any cowboy hat that would keep the sun off your face and off the back of your neck would be a good thing. Baseball cap, we call them boonie caps, the flexible hats that you can wear that have a flexible brim in the army. Um, gloves, for sure gloves. Uh, you can get the ones with reinforced knuckles and stuff to protect your hands. Um, there, there's a lot, so, but, you know, if you're new to this, maybe try to find somebody who's not new, link up with them, maybe two or three or four or five can make a group where you can hit it off, you know, bottom line is, you know, if you're by yourself or even if a husband and wife are together, you know, you can't stay awake, so. There's going to be guard shifts. There's all going to be all kinds of stuff. It's a lot of work, a lot of problems. So I don't know. Uh, I just want to kind of do a video. I've been watching a lot of 80s movies. And I recorded the original Red Dawn the other day. And I've been watching it intermittently. It's on the screen right now. And I had the, the volume muted. Um, things are getting weird. Well, they've been weird they're getting weirder so all you can do is prepare for what you think may happen you know try not to be scared I mean, here's I told the, my second cousin's daughter the other day don't worry about dying you're gonna die no matter what you do live your life you know do what you want to do go where you want to go don't be a criminal don't be a dirtbag don't be one of those people nobody likes but you know, don't live in fear. So, if you live in fear, you ain't gonna make it. So, I mean, there's people who have PTA, PTSD, and lost their damn mind when they came back from the war because when people are trying to kill you 24 hours a day, mortar shells, rockets, small fires for an entire year, kind of messes with you. So, if you're scared of dying, you ain't gonna do well. So, I've said over and over and over, there's so much. You know, if you got questions of me, feel free to make a comment, uh, and I will try and get back with you. I don't have a large audience, but I will do my best to, uh, you know, do what I can for anybody who asks a question. So, short recommendation and list: 357 Magnum revolver, preferably no less than six, but if you can find a seven or eight shot, eight shots are really rare, rare but they're coming in handy. Uh, 357 Magnum because you can shoot 38 Special out of it and then uh, I would recommend a semi-automatic and 40i5 ACP or 9mm common rounds uh, there's a big debate on that don't get into that just the most important thing about a gun is that you can shoot it accurately so you know if you can find someone you can uh, test fire some guns before you buy your own that would be best Name brands are a personal choice. It's a personal, a very personal decision to buy a gun. Even boys should eh, eh, carry it. Got up early today, six six twenty. Um, and then rifles, I would say five five six semi-automatic AR style or an AK or both. And then uh, a weapon you can reach out further. And 308, 30 odd six, 300 wind mag, something you can engage targets out if you have the ability. Because 
you can have the capability, but if you're like me, I can't see for shit and I can't hold the gun steady anymore. So anything past about two or three hundred yards, and I ain't gonna hit it. So, uh, so 308. If you can only afford one rifle, get an AR and 308. Uh, pretty much everything you're gonna shoot at anyway is gonna be under 100 yards. So practice that the most, and then you know. If there's a range where you can practice shooting and stuff a little further out, so you can kind of see what your gun does. You know, obviously magazines outfit your weapon. Both of my ARs, I did a video on those. They have quad rails, they have lasers, they have a forward grip, and they have weapons lights. I have scopes, I have slings, uh, body armor. I don't know if, if you know you're going to get shot at having body armor, it's good. But I guarantee if you get hit with body armor on, as in it hits your plate, if it's any kind of a 30 cal or higher uh, weapon, it's going to knock you down, it's going to knock the air out of you, and it may break your ribs. You know, if it's something like a, I think it's called the Juganov, like the, it's the Russian sniper rifle, that, that shit broke a guy's plate. Uh, in Iraq, there was a friend of mine's driver or gunner. I was sticking up out of the hatch on the way up, shot him in the front, and on the way back, shot him in the back. Uh, he survived, you know. But let's understand the body armor keeps the bullet from going into you, but the plates they absorb all the the impact and uh, the velocity and weight of the bullet. Depending on what kind of plates you're running, you may get shrapnel from that bullet that deflects off, or what they call splay, I think, where the bullet hits it and it fragments. Uh, you know, and then if the shooter knows you got body armor on, they may shoot you in the head if you don't have a helmet, or shoot you in the neck, or you know, there's places and ways you can shoot somebody with body armor where they still die. So. I used to tell my NCOIC's husband because he was bitching about shooting at bad guys, hitting them, and they get up and run off. I said, fuck that motherfucker. Shoot him in the legs. He ain't running no more. So, if you have to, and I hope none of you do, but if you, if you come face to face with him, you don't hesitate. No, nope, they won't. So, hopefully we don't have no enemies here in the States. God forbid we're shooting at each other, but just make sure you understand what you're doing when you do it if you do it so it's, it's, it's a bad deal so, uh, this is kind of a long video so you know realize you're going to need a place to dry your clothes too wash your clothes I didn't cover that I mean you know if there's no power and you're using a washing machine which means you're using a bucket or I got a ringer and one washboard. I need one more of each of those, but there's, like everyone else, I have so much money to spend on so many things. And right now my focus is the clothesline and the back porch. Uh, and after that, assuming nothing has happened, then it's gonna be, you know, a long list of other things. And then, you know, at some point I will invest in a ringer, another ringer, and I will invest in uh, another washboard. Washboard is cheap, but the ringer is like $150, $200, $250. So that's assuming you can find one. Anyway, and then you need the buckets to use it in. A lot of people talk about using a plunger, but uh, I would tell you if you're going to use the plunger in a five gallon bucket, which is the minimum amount that you would need to wash, uh, I would go get a, a clean plunger, not the one from the bathroom. Even if you wash it, that thing stinks if you use it for anything other than, you know, whatever. Anyway, cooking utensils to use with the cast iron stuff, you know. Seeds for a garden. Uh, obviously, bug out bags, get home bags, freeze dry food, MREs, fire starting capability. Lighters, uh, butane lighters, matches, uh, waterproof fire starters, uh, 
first aid. You know, I'm on my list of things to get in August is a suture kit from Amazon. I try to teach myself how. I live in San Antonio, so I might find try and find somebody who can teach me how to do stitches. Um, I don't know what else to say. You know, ability to brush your teeth. I think probably one of the big things that's going to get people is dental infections. Uh, you see people walking around with their face all swollen up. After shit hits the fan, the face is going to swell up and then they're going to die from the infection. Uh, alcohol, not necessarily the kind you drink, the kind you can pour on a wound. Bleach for disinfecting stuff. Uh, rubber gloves, work gloves. Hammers, nails, manual drills, drill bits, uh, screws. You know, I would say some lumber, but that shit warps over time if it's not used. Uh, if you got pets. Uh, you need to figure in water for them, food for them. If you got livestock or any kind of animals, like I got chickens, so I need to figure in a way to feed them without uh, chicken feed. I've got probably three months of chicken feed on hand. Uh, actually, I got enough that I don't even have to go get chicken feed this month, so. Uh, air pellet rifles. Something high powered and accurate that you can engage like rabbits and stuff. Wrist rockets, same thing. You can take down a small game with that. Bow and arrow, probably, if you have it. I've got a bow and arrow, but it's not zero or sighted in, so I need to do that. So, uh, some kind of watch so you can tell time and a paper calendar, preferably next year, this year, and because you can figure out the months each year coming afterwards if you will lose internet and all that stuff <sighs> man I'm tired anyway I uh, think that wraps it up it's almost a 30 minute video one of the longer ones I've done and I'm doing it on the phone so I don't know how well it's going to upload uh, if you got questions hit me up I would do my best to uh, answer them Y'all stay safe, keep your ear to the ground, pay attention to what's going on, prepare for what you know about, what you think is going to happen, the rest of it, flush it. So, Chief Prepper, out.